quick code review of the posted solution for exercise 10. I'm not going to go through every one of these steps because we've done that before. Obviously starting a new project, uh, going to the app data folder, right clicking, adding the uh, database, running the query that's posted up in Blackboard. You should be all good with that. So the difference here is of course we have stored procedures for most everything we need. If you need to modify them, feel free. Okay. A uh, single web form that allows the user to list the wines as well as insert, update, and delete. So what I did in my posted solution is I did both approaches. So you have an example of each. So here we go. So uh, just to remind you then, so in app data folder, there's our database where we just ran our, our query posted in Blackboard to get the uh, stored procedures and everything in place. And then I have two different web forms, uh, the one with the grid and the details view, and then the one with details view only. So you remember how this works? I've showed you before. Whichever one is open in the designer loads when you run the application. So uh, just have a quick look at the uh, working uh, solution here. What we basically have is a grid view, right? Allowing nice, easy sorting. Notice we have three pages of data, a little bit more data to work with than some of our other samples earlier, right? I can sort it by the different columns. Uh, I can filter just for red wines or dessert wines, right? We only have a few dessert wines in here and away we go. All right, I can go back to all wines. And what do we have? Well, we have delete, uh, confirm there. Are you sure you want to? We have our edit, which allows us to edit in place, okay? So no, the price of this went up to 39.95 and we can click update and there we go. So that has been changed. The uh, uh, by the way, of course, we do also want to be concerned by have, about having validation, right? So there's our required field validator. We templated the columns in this grid, uh, the fix uh, name is required, and so on and so forth. If I put an extra letter or character, then we'll also get informed about exactly four digits, okay? So it won't take three, it won't take five, it won't even take anything that doesn't have a... Okay, just to show you that... It's just the fifth character of any sort. Uh, it has to be exactly four, nothing but digits, right? So we did that with a regular expression validator. Uh, the price is a range, so if uh, we were to try and go too big, right? Price must be a valid amount less than $1,000. Okay. We can cancel that. Add new then switches the visibility of our grid and our details view. Again, we have all... All of our validation going on here as well. Our foreign key is a templated column with the drop down list. So, just to actually add a new line and the year, uh, because of course, if I tried to insert without it, I'll be told can't leave it blank. New wine 1999, that's a vintage year. What's that saying about do it like in 1999 or something? Uh, twenty-five ninety-five, and uh, I'll leave it as a dessert so it's easy to find. Because, <laughs> as you know, we don't have a lot of dessert wines. But there it is. There's our new wine right there. We could edit it and uh, so on. Uh, oh, let's just show you one thing. Um, we have our unique constraint on the combination of wine name and year, right? So if I were to try to add another wine called new wine. and give it that same year, 1999. Doesn't matter if the price was different. One dollar, it's a real special treat, right? Error, adding the new wine. The combination of name and year must be unique. So that's our database error that we trapped on an update. Same thing, would, actually on an insert, same thing would happen on an update. And uh, for example, if I took this one, tried to edit it and make it the same and update that then i get the same thing it canceled the change error updating wine combination right so we see our database error handling our validation is all in place we can switch uh, to insert mode only in the grid view so that's pretty much everything i asked for in the instructions notice that i've got a very very crude navigation going on here so we can go and look at the uh, example page with just the details view for everything Right, so we can actually do a new here directly. Uh, <laughs> to show you that 
going through different page doesn't matter, right? I'll still get my error, error adding new wine combination must be unique, right? Okay, uh, but of course we have our validation going on. But this time on this page, just for the fun of it, I did that dynamic validation approach. So these controls, instead of being bound controls, are just the dynamic controls. And we set up a wine class with the metadata to provide for the validation. That's noted here that we're using dynamic validation for these controls. And we can go back and forth between the two different pages just by clicking these links. I'll show you in a second how easy it was to make those. Uh, filtering, right? So we can filter. And that gives us a reduced list here in the drop-down list. If I go back to all wine types, then my navigation drop-down okay, now has all of them in there again. And we can just jump to whichever one we need. And, of course, I did also confirm. Are you sure you want to delete? Okay. All right. So let's have a look at the code, right? <clears throat> Starting with our familiar grid page. Okay, I'll, I'll just go to design view to kind of summarize things first. Two data types, sorry, data sources. Uh, the first one just is configured with the select. Okay, there's no uh, action queries related to this. Uh, no update, insert, or delete. Just the select, and it selects from a prepared store procedure, just giving us our usual uh, approach for any list style store procedure. Right, <clears throat> just to test the query. Just our alphabetical list of the foreign key values, the actual names to show with the ID stored internally. Okay, I'll just cancel. Okay, that is the data source for this drop down list, right? Is our wine type showing the wine type name with the ID internally? Notice we did add our all option here with a value of zero, our good flag value to use with an integer identity. And we set the uh, pen data bound items to true so that would uh, preserve the existing items collection and add the data coming to the database to it. Since I'm only filtering on one, we enabled auto post back as well. So that's why our DS winds, if we run through the configuration here quickly, using the same connection string, it's using the uh, wine select by wine type store procedure that has a uh, parameter to ask for the wine type ID. Our insert, update, and delete are just all our stored procedures for wine. Notice that because there is a <clears throat> select parameter for the wine type ID, we're getting it from a control, which control our drop down list for the wine type list. Uh, that's the one at the top. Okay, so that is basically all that is. So the uh, grid is just set up bound to the DS wine. So is the details view. Details view, of course, has a few properties set in particular. It has the uh, enable view state set to false, so it doesn't remember the last values entered. It has the visible property set to false, so it's not visible on the screen when it first comes up. And the default mode, right? Default mode is set to insert because that's the only way we ever want to see it or deal with it. Along with that, you notice that enable inserting is the only thing checked off here. All of the fields are, are templated, so we can add our validation controls manually inside each one. All right, let's just have a quick look here. If we look at the source, we didn't spend a lot of time looking at the source of our templated controls before, so let's just do that now. Just for example, we'll pick one, not the, uh, uh, let's pick something that is a little bit more interesting. The wine year, right? Wine year. Okay, inside the insert item text box, that's the only one we care about. We have the actual text box itself binding to the wine year. We have a required field validator. All it has to do is point at text box two as the control to validate, and it does its job. We just set up our message and text property and away we go. The more interesting one is our regular expression, right? The regular expression validator, by the way, let me show you in design view, uh, if I just go into edit templates, I can get to it easily here. But and this is identical in whether you're working in the details of the grid view. It's the exact same approach. So let's come down here to wine year insert item template. Now I can see the individual one. So here's our regular expression. Notice that the key of the, here, of course, is the re validation expression, right? So this backslash D means we're just going to look for digits only. How many? Four. 
right? How did I come up with that? Ooh, it was really hard. I came up here, looked at a French postal code, which allows five digits. <laughs> Started with that, and I just changed manually the number five to four, right? That so works very well. Gives me just four digits, no more, no less, and digit characters only, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, right? So that's an easy way to get that one going. Let's just go while we're in design mode here. We'll go down to the uh, range for the price. Insert item template. Okay, so we have our required field validator first. All right. Again, oh, the only thing I could mention, whenever I have two, count them, two validators working together, what I usually do is the one that's kind of leftmost, I'll set to display dynamic. What dynamic for the display attribute means is that it will only use up room on the screen if it actually wants to present itself, to show itself. It doesn't push other things out of the way if it's not actually visible, right? And that works very well because the next one beside it, right, if I only have, I'll only have one message at a time, if it's not, uh, if it's blank, nothing's filled in, then I'll see the required field validator complaint. So I'll see the star right beside the text box. If that's happy because there's something entered and then the range validator complains, well, it won't be pushed over. There won't be this funny looking blank space beside it. It will actually then fill up and sit on, right on top. So the location on the screen of the asterisk, no matter which one of these is displayed, will be the same. Small, small thing, but I thought I should explain my code. Okay, that's why that one's dynamic. The range validator. Uh, is not, right? Display is just static because there's nothing to appear beside it, so it doesn't really matter. I could make it dynamic. It wouldn't make any difference. Now, with the range, the fun thing here, instead of a validation expression, is, of course, we have our minimum value, maximum value. Remember, the instructions said less than 1,000. So I don't have to worry about a million decimal places. We are talking currency, right? We don't worry about half pennies. So 999 and 99 cents. That's a good maximum value that's allowed, minimum value of zero. And the type being currency guarantees that if people type in garbage characters, that it will catch that and not allow it. So that works very well. So that's pretty much it for our validation controls. Uh, the required and the range of the extra ones, all three of them also need uh, regular express, sorry, required field validators. Summary on all my pages, I just have it showing the message. Uh, by the way, to get, I mentioned I would show you how to get these links. So I'm on the Wines Grid. If I want to put a link to a different page, I can just drag and drop the page. <laughs> it just puts a link right there. You can see in the source, okay, it's just an href to the actual page. You can change the text, of course, make it whatever you want here, and that's what will appear. But when you click the link, it just navigates to the page, just using the relative path. Okay, well, I already have one. I'll take that out. All right, so I think that uh, covers this page for the most part because it's just like the examples we've done in the past. Um, maybe I, I should have showed you a bit of a another tip, right? When you're doing your edit columns, for example, with price, before I templated it, uh, see, it's gone now. There was an option here where you could set the uh, uh, data format style. And so by doing that, while it was still a bound field, uh, it gave me the chance, even after it's a templated, it filled in some uh, code for me. So here we just add it again as a bound field. So I can show you. Way down here, you see data, data format string, right? So you can give it a format string. And the usual uh, note that it's the first item, colon, C for currency, right? Or little d for date. Well, I could even mention those two down here. Right. If I do that first and save it, then when I convert this to a template field, let me show you what it does. But first of all, let me actually just remove that. I don't want to actually add it. OK, so going back to the code inside the grid. All right, so let's find our uh, price. OK, what it did is in the item template, it added a little bit to the binding expression. We're binding to wine price and optionally, we're using the overload of bind here that allows us to pass the format expression, right? Now, in edit mode, we don't want it formatted as currency because that would put dollar signs and other things which aren't allowed in data entry, right? So we wouldn't have that here. We just have it in item mode. 
but it's just a, a bit of a savings if you do any f special formatting and things like that before you template it it can just save a bit of time there's another tip for you all right so that's it for this page uh, not too much to show you about the other one it is pretty similar except that we're just using the one control but I'll be honest with you what I did first is I started on this page in design view you can click control click select multiple items <laughs> like that and say hey you know what those are all good and useful control C to copy come to the blank page control B to paste and that's how I got them over here right so it has all this exact same code from the other page replicated here and then uh, of course it was uh, in the code behind I have to do some work there to make sure that any referenced event handlers are brought over as well anyway so we have um, the wine filters by type this of course is working with our wine type list okay it just gives us our type red white dessert and then it is the parameter used for our DS wines exactly the same as the other page right so it's the control of the wine type list and of course all this came over when I just copied and pasted them now the difference here is I've added a second drop-down list so what I did is uh, DS wines of course returns a list of all the wines it includes a summary property it was already in there so all I really had to do here was take that uh, first simplistic approach Sorry, um, that's not what I meant to show you. <laughs> I'm going to choose data source. Okay, so it's these DS wines, but this time I'm showing the wine summary. It was there all along, okay, and internally storing the primary key, the wine ID. So it's just using the same data, but that allows me to use what we did is we added a selected index changed event, right? So in the code behind, all I'm doing is that little trick. I'm setting the page index of the details view to match the selected index of the wine. And that works quite well in most circumstances. Helps the fact that I uh, do have the stored procedure sorting it. Uh, by the way, I did add an order by clause to the stored procedure just so it sorted it a little bit more nicely. Uh, but the other thing is I did find a couple things came up. When you deleted a record, it didn't always update and synchronize the uh, details view to my drop down. So I just, it goes back to the first item in this drop down list. So I'm just forcing the page index back to zero whenever you delete. And I found it seemed to help as well to do the same thing uh, when the filter changes. So whenever you change the filter, just make sure that the page index of the details view resets to zero, right? That's a couple little things I added that weren't in our discussions earlier but it seems to make this approach work better. Truth is I really usually use separate data source, but I didn't have a stored procedure ready, so that wouldn't have been fair to have made a new stored procedure that you wouldn't have had. In terms of the code itself, so here is where I'm using uh, dynamic validation. So I added our page init, and we're just enabling dynamic data based on my wine class right type of wine object so that was created inside here notice that we have our using for our project dot models folder and inside models i see wine <clears throat> so here is how i in one location put all of the information about the validation required and it's used in the details view any grid views i could have used this in all the pages but i wanted to manually do the other example page so just required attribute on the wine name both are required and the regular expression i should maybe explain remember in our regular expression just in the uh, regular expression validation control we just had a single backslash trouble is we're doing a string here in c sharp and the backslash character is used as an escape character meaning whatever comes after it is a literal so i have to put two of them in a row to say literally i mean a backslash <laughs> so that's the one little change there to the regular expression and down here I have a required and then a range from 0 to 999.99 .99, right with a comment by the way this data type we talked about that in class the other day what that does is it in the metadata tells the user interface to format it as currency and it's smart enough to know 
to do that uh, in item mode, but to remove the formatting as currency, the dollar sign, and so on in uh, edit mode, right? So that just took care of that, so I didn't have to manually set any data format strings. But doing that, what allowed me to do then is inside this uh, control itself, instead of having to template everything, I just set them to dynamic fields, and then it dynamically creates the validation for wine name, year, and price. Other than that, it was a matter of just setting up all the templates that I did require, in particular then the foreign key, my drop-down list there, I templated the command column this time just so I could get my own client click in the delete. So that's basically it. You have the code. I just wanted to give a quick explanation of it. I guess I didn't show you the code behind for the, for the one that has the grid and the details view. So let's just uh, uh, go to that. I can do that in any number of ways. Oh, I didn't really want to add that. So I could index changed. Bad, David. Okay, it's the kind of thing that happens all the time, but then if you remove something like that, remember I will get a build error. I'll just, <clears throat> excuse me, show you that. We'll get a build error because the control will have had a reference. Ah, how come it's succeeding? Oh, I hadn't saved changes, that's why I guess. Hmm, strange. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Let me get back to what I was going to show you. All right, so let's just go to the code behind page. And here we are. So uh, page load, we just clear our, our uh, label error, where I reuse it for all kinds of messages. Our add new button, we just switch the visible properties. Whenever we're done working with any command inside the details view, we switch them back, right? This one's going to be two presented because we're only ever seeing it in insert mode. So that is insert or cancel. Don't care which one. It means we're done and we're going to go back to seeing the grid. Here's our database error handling, okay? Um, so, oh, we got to fill in the uh, code here. Uh, that's what I meant to do. So I can show you how to do that now. So let's just stop this. I'm going to run it once more. I'm going to set that breakpoint so we can examine the error message itself, right? Ah, see, it is, uh, it did add that and I surprised it built. Okay, it catches it at runtime anyway. So it's not a build error, but uh, what we're seeing here is the reference to that um, unselected index changed event, which I deleted, right? So we'll have to go back and fix that now. It's good to see things mess up sometimes too. Reminds us we're all human. Okay, so let me get to there first. So that's in the grid, in the source. There we go, on selected index changed. We'll just take that out. Ah. That's why often selecting by using the arrow keys, hold shift down in your arrow. It's much easier than the mouse at times. And there we go. So that's that problem solved. We still have a break, break point in place, right? <clears throat> So was that update or insert? Let me go back and look again. I'm trying to remember, I put the breakpoint on the inserted. Okay, it'll be the same message in both. So uh, what I could do is I could copy this back. Oh Noir, we have a year 2000. So if I go to add new, a back Oh Noir of year 2000. See, I can have a 2001, but I can't have two with the same name in the same year. Insert. And there we go. So now I can examine, okay, the actual name is IX Unique Wine. That's the name of the constraint inside the database. So that would be the best thing for me to put in here. Now I know for sure, because I could see the error message, IX Unique Wine. So we'll get rid of the breakpoint. And we want the same thing, okay, in my error handling for both. Right? There we go. All right. So that, that's it. So I'll, I'll just get that posted again with that change. It's good for you to see that I'm not perfect either. I only got a 99. Darn. Okay. Um, so we have our 
two s methods here to swap the visibility. These are just the database error handling for both the inserted and updated events, the after events. Notice that they are on the data source, not on either the grid or details view, right? And basically they're the same, except I say updating as opposed to adding, okay, to give more context in the message being given back. That's about it. Bada bing, bada boom.